Diffusion. First of all, what is diffusion? Diffusion is a passive cellular transport and it results from kinetic energy. Diffusion is the spontaneous net movement of particles or molecules from areas with high concentration to areas with low concentration of that substance. And what does that mean? That means that, for example, if we pour sugar in hot tea, the sugar firstly will stay at the same area. Therefore, the concentration of sugar in that area is high. Shortly after the solute, or in our case, sugar, will spread eventually in the airs that had low concentration of sugar. This is also referred to as movement of a substance down the concentration gradient. And concentration gradient, this is the difference between concentrations in space. Molecules will always move down the concentration gradient towards areas of lesser concentration. For example, think of food coloring that spreads in a glass of water or air freshener spread in the room. When the molecules of sugar have equally spread in the solvent, which is due, it is called equilibrium. So, as you see from the picture, the dye molecules are spreading into the water. As they are moving down the concentration gradient, they begin to look perfectly symmetrical. And at the end, they either disappear or they change the color of the water in a different solid field one. Now, let's talk about the importance of diffusion. The main important thing about diffusion is that it creates energy. It is exogenic, which means that does not require energy to occur. A very simple example of diffusion when it's giving energy is in the respiratory system. The venous blood, which has a low concentration of oxygen, passes through the alveoli, which has a high concentration of oxygen. Their diffusion occurs and allows the oxygen to pass through the membrane into the blood cell. Also, the carbon dioxide goes out the blood cell because the concentration of carbon dioxide in the alveoli is less than in the venous blood cell. Diffusion is also used in photosynthesis and transpiration. There are three main types of diffusion. Simple, channel and facilitated. And we are going to look into each one of them. The first one, simple diffusion, is the most simplest one, obviously. It is when a small non-polar, that means without any charge, molecule passes through a lipid bilayer or membrane. In simple diffusion, hydrophobic molecules can move into a hydrophobic phobic region of the membrane without getting rejected. Hydrophobic means that it is not able to interact with polar molecules, only with non-polar. That is why hydrophilic molecules cannot participate in simple diffusion, because they will get rejected from the membrane. An example of simple diffusion is osmosis, for which my colleague will talk about later. Channel diffusion is uh, also another type of passive transport. It involves channel pro proteins where molecules move through an open aqueous pore. Here, ions and charged particles can pass through the pore, while in simple they couldn't. The final one, facilitated diffusion, is a type of passive transport which allows subst substances to cross membrane with the assistance of special transfer proteins. With the use of ion channel proteins and carrier proteins, which are placed in the cell membrane, the substances are transported into the cell. Ion channel proteins permit specific ions to pass through the protein shell channel. They are regulated by the cell and are either open or closed to control the passage to the inner parts of the cell. Carrier proteins tied to specific molecules change their shape and deposit the molecules across the membrane. After everything is completed, the proteins go back to their initial positions. What is osmosis? Osmosis is the result of diffusion across a semipermeable membrane. Osmosis is the spontaneous movement of solvent molecules through a semipermeable membrane into an area of higher solid concentration. Semipermeable membranes are very thin layers of material that allow small molecules like oxygen, water, carbon dioxide and others to pass through. However, they do not allow larger molecules like sucrose and protein to pass through.
The process was first studied in 1877 by a German plant psychologist, Wilhelm Pfeffer. In biology, the solvent is typically water, but osmosis can occur in other liquids, supercritical liquids, and even gases. When a cell is submerged in water, the water molecules pass through the cell membrane from an area of low solar concentration to high solar concentration. For example, if the cell is submerged in salt water, as you can see, water molecules move out of the cell. If a cell is submerged in fresh water, water molecules move into the cell. Salt is a solid. When it is concentrated inside or outside the cell, it will draw the water in its direction. This shows why you get thirsty after eating something salt. show you our experiment about diffusion and osmosis. Now I will pour dye colors, one blue and one red, in these two beakers. One of them is filled with cold water, this one, and the other is filled with hot water, this one. Let's see what will happen. in the hot water faster because molecules are moving faster in warm places and in the cold water the same process happens but the molecules are moving slower. At the end we can see what is called equilibrium.